Now for your board, you need to get this remounted here so people know where it is. Spent hours looking for this sign. I came on the wrong path, fool that I am. So I know you got lots of priorities, but it'd be nice if you could do it for us all. Look at what you see when you get out in the boat, eh? Look at this world. My goodness. I've never seen the like. Well, today we're going to Harry Veg Plantation. She's up as a Glen Helen. And we start off the footpath, and here we see this lovely icicle world. Astonishing. Harry Veg means little shielding. I was here about 10 years ago. Took some pictures. To load on with this video. I don't know how far it is up to here. Very big farm was farm is about 170 acres. It was always tied with the Glen Helen estate for many years. Something special to show you today. Now they may not be special to you, but for the last six months I've had my wellies on and today I've got my walking boots. Hallelujah! Just checking where we go. Been up so I had to look back. So it's just up around the corner somewhere. It's a little place to pick up for letting 1830. 100 acres. William Kelly was the uh, letting agent. In 1855, they came up for letting again with a price of £80 per acre, which is about three and a half grand today. I think William Kane was the tenant that time. It's always been tied more or less to the Glen Helen estate for most of its life. And um, it obviously supplied all the veg, or most of the veg and the animals when it was in full production. So the more ado, we go up around the corner, see what we can find. Decent enough track. Hard to walk on. Dougie Allen was talking about this place a few weeks ago on Max Radio, a little while ago actually. Look, the Farsi boy used to be sent up here to do the um, trimming around the trees because these Farsi boy bought this place in 1957 58, I think. And um, that's when they the trees. Sick of spruce comes to mind, I think. Look at those straight lines of trees. Eh? Can we do it these days? Maybe we could. Maybe we could. I promise not to try and puff like a pair of old wounded bellows. Talk a bit about the history. Really big farm. Various people ran the farm over the years. Clerks, killers, pains have all been sort of part of it. And it's had a big scramble course for a few years as well. Talk a bit about that later too.
just checking the way again. In 1898, this place came up for auction again by Mr. Bell. And Mr. Bell had actually bought or established a quarry in the Glen. He bought this land and uh, he died around about this time. The quarry had long since gone out of production, like so many of the quarries in Alaman. They just weren't viable anymore. Now, I'm not going to try and talk and walk up here because it's too steep. All you're going to hear is me boo uh, wheezing. No pillow barrel, so. Come up. The um, scramble course was just above Glen Hill. And um, it was running from 57 to uh, 56 to 58 till the forestry board bought it and took it over. Some very famous Manxmen uh, learned the trade here. We're talking about Dennis Christian, David Christian. They were the guys to beat, according to Lenny Carouche, anyway. And uh, one of the other guys, a guy called Doug Crennell. There's a picture of him at the end here somewhere. And um, they were all on old British bikes, and you'd hear them reverberate around the valley, I'm sure. We know two strokes in those days, I guess now. There was no club hut, it was just a basic scramble course around this particular forest as is now and that's Doug Crennell just seen pop into the interview and uh, they were all, well the Christian boys were all part of the E.B. Christians family and I believe they were uh, related to Norman Christian who was still E.B. Christians in, the, uh, in between the wars I guess. After another bit of a detour, you'd think I'd know where this place is, wouldn't you? I was here ten years ago. Thought I'd walk right to it. I'd resort to my phone. Anyway, the tough information before it was 1870 it was off for sale. In 1898, which I should have told you, it was farmed by Billy Quirk. Oh, and he had ten kids, two wives. One of his children was called Freddie Quirk. And Freddie Quirk, his father Stanley Quirk from Kinsloo. So there's a bit more history off the place. Just like I could believe. How many years ago? 60 years ago. This was a farm. No trees on it. The, um, the parcel runs along by the Glen Helen Road called the Beery. That joins up with this one. This one's obviously called Eerie Big Plantation. You can hear my feet crunching on the frosty ground. Such a change from the mud. Nineteen thirty-three a poultry farmer had this place. And then Phil's name was either Antonin or Aldenant, can't remember. Anyway, here's a poultry farmer and uh, ran up massive debts, left the Alaman owing people thousands and one of the deaths I do remember was to a fellow called John James Kelly and he was a uh, carpenter yeah at Belig and uh, one of his mates was a blacksmith he called Kenyuk and they built stiff carts and uh, one of the debts owing to um, them was, uh, was for a cart like this one here. It reminds me of a tale really. On uh, Saturday afternoons my dad used to like the wrestling. Uh, we all know he was raked and faked and all the rest of it but he did love it. And he worked seven days a week so that was his pleasure really. And his favourite was a guy called Les Kellett. I'll put some pictures up. And he was a really funny 
wrestler. Funny and good. How hard now. And the story is like what used to happen, my sister Gwen and I used to go out and load turnips in the cart. Like this one. You've just seen pictures of. And uh, we had an old international, B275 and a 414. And uh, I used to hitch it up to the cart and go out to the fields in the winter time. And she'd help me load up the turnips for the cows. And uh, it used to be so cold the ground, you could kick the turnips out of your feet. But uh, we used to have this game where we filled the cart up and she used to always blame me because I would throw a turnip over. And I'd roll off the top and bang her on the head. And uh, she never believed me that I never did it on purpose. And I can't blame her really, because I was a cussed little sod as a kid. So that's a little bit of light relief. I can just hear the wind whistling through the trees. The trouble with doing these videos, I do like doing them, but it's getting them squashed down to 15 minutes for YouTube. Because there's so much to see when you do these. So this is says, what do you leave in? What do you take out? Got to put a little bit in. So the late afternoon sun just catches the trees there. glow about has not it? It's a typical sort of February light, it's just starting to change. Back to the car park, parked in Glen Helen. Car park. As usual, it's beautiful to be out. How lucky are we? Again, a whole day out here in Glen. I only saw one person briefly. I own the place again. <laughs> <laughs> 